Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So in the last two videos, we created a Zener regulator, which is this one here, which that takes an unregulated DC voltage at its input and then outputs a steady regulated DC voltage at the output. We did that just using literally just a resistor in series plus a Zener diode. Then what we did was we then added a transistor to that whole mix, which also with a capacitor, but we added a transistor and then that then made it a transistor series Zener voltage regulator. And so now in this video, we'll be going one step further and moving that transistor from being in series with the load to now being in parallel with the load. And this is now called a transistor shunt voltage regulator. So you might be asking if you haven't watched those videos, why do we do that? Why add a transistor? The reason being is this circuit like this, it's good to have this as a voltage reference, but there's no, there's just not enough current through this load in order to drive anything useful. As we saw when I tested it with my motor, the, this circuit just as is, just didn't output enough current. So we add the transistor, which then allows a much better current flow and we're able to drive an actual decent load of it. So the transistor's job, whether it's in series with the load like it is here, or if it's in parallel with the load like it is here, its job is to work as a variable resistor and change the resistance of the transistor, which then changes the voltage at the collector emitter so the, the voltage across the transistor changes, which then affects the output voltage. So you might remember two videos ago when I started these uh, voltage regulators, I explained the difference between a series voltage regulator and a shunt voltage regulator and also the benefits. I'm not going to repeat it, but you can go back and watch that video. So let's get into it. The way that this works is this transistor here, it regulates the voltage by shunting the current away from the load. So you've got current coming from supply going to the load and this transistor here is shunting current away from the load as the load is varying. I think the most important thing to understand about this setup here is that the voltage at the output V out, so plus minus you got V out here, it's equal to the voltage VZ which is the voltage across this Zener diode plus the voltage V base emitter which is the voltage across from the base to the emitter so VB now if you've if you've completed your second year of electrical engineering, I mean in some units even the first year, you should know that VBE is going to be 0 0.7 volts. And so now where I've got my 5.1 volt xenodiode as I do here, 5.1 volts, that means that my output is going to be VZ, which is 5.1 volts, plus 0 0.7 volts, which is equals 5.8 volts. And so if you look over here, we've got 5.78 volts. 5.8 volts at the output. Now you might be wondering why put the transistor in, in parallel with the load versus in series? When should you do which? As I said, I explained it a little bit in here, but to be honest with you, most people pr prefer to use the series configuration. So I would just recommend going with the series configuration. I don't know too much about this topic, obviously. The shunt, the one in the, the, the transistor in, as the shunt form in parallel works as well, just not as good as the series one. So just go with the series one. But yeah, let's go into how this works. So over here, I've got my nine volt supply and then I've got a hundred ohm series resistor. Okay. And then I've got my 5.1 volt xenodiode connected to the base of the transistor. So the xenodiode, once this crosses 5.1 volts, right, then the base of the transistor turns on and then this then regulates the output voltage across here. So right now, this 5%, what this means here is I've got a variable resistor which goes from zero to 10K ohms okay and so at five percent it's at 500 ohms so this load right now is 500 ohms and so at 500 ohms i've got 5.76 volts as i increase my load resistance you can see now it's at 15 percent which is 1.5 k ohms my voltage has gone from 5.76 up to 5.78 if i keep going at 30 percent which is 3k ohms my voltage is still only at 5.78, the same as it was up here, 5.78 volts. If I continue, 60%, which is 6K ohms. Now my output voltage is 5.79 volts. So just gone up literally by 10 millivolts, 5.78 up to 5.79. Again, now 8,500 ohms, still only 5.79. And then up at 10K ohms load, I've still got 5.79 volts. So the voltage at the output is staying completely stable because of this transistor. So let me show you on the breadboard. Okay, so here I've got a 100 ohm resistor 
which is connected to my VCC, my supply, okay? So you see I've got my 9 volt supply coming to my 100 ohm resistor, which is here. And then this is now connected to my Zenodiode and my transistor at the collector. And also my load, which is this green line here. So this variable resistor here goes from 0 to 10k. So you can see I turn it here. And so when it's at this point here, it's at 0 ohms. And when I turn it all the way over to here, it's at 10k ohms. And so then this is then going to ground. My Zenodiode here is connected to the base here of my transistor. And then the transistor here, the emitter, is going to ground. So once this Zenodiode gets 5.1 volts, it starts conducting, which turns on my transistor, and then my transistor goes through to ground. All right, so let's turn it on. Okay, so let's just pop back to the simulation for a second. So I've got 9 volts coming in here. So here you can see I've got, I uh, showed you over here actually, my voltage is, my output voltage is going to be voltage across the Zener plus voltage across base emitter. So 5.1 volts here across the Zenodiode plus the 0 0.7 volts across the VBE, right? So if I now check my voltage across my Zenodiode, we get 5.2 volts. So I'm expecting it to be a 0 0.6 volt drop across my transistor. So I want to do the emitter and the base and I get 6 point, 0 0.6 volts. So now if I check across my load, which is my variable resistor, I get 5.8 volts, beautiful. So that works just as expected. So now, what we're expecting to happen is that no matter how much I turn, change this variable resistor, as long as I don't go up down to zero ohms, because if I go to zero ohms, I get a short circuit basically. And think about that, think about it like this, right? If you look here, I've got my 100 ohm resistor. And then if I short out this point here, I mean, let's see if you can hear it. Okay, you can't hear it, but you can see my current draw on my power supply here is 30 milliamps. The moment I make that zero, it jumps up to 80 because I've now got a short circuit here going just across my resistor and then straight to ground if this variable resistor is at zero ohms. So I just need to keep it at 500 ohms, which is why I started up here at 500 ohms. I didn't start at zero ohms because think about it, like, you know, zero ohms is not no load. Zero ohms is just a straight short circuit. So you basically cut off the entirety of this the circuit but you cut off the Zenodiode and the transistor by shorting it so that's not a good idea obviously okay so let's test it so this is probably at about 500 ohms now so if we just check our voltage 5.8 okay and then as I turn this more let's say right like 1 1.5k now 5.8 beautiful turn it some more 5.8 so you see we're changing the the, the resistance of the load and our output voltage should just stay the same. 5.83 is working beautifully. So it's at 10K now. 5.83, lovely. So we can check the resistance as well. Let's just turn this off. So interestingly, as I try to check the resistance across it like this, where I've still got my power supply connected, it's actually messing with it. So it can't really get a good reading. Look, it just goes all over the place. So I disconnect my ground and then I should be able to read. There you go, 9.8K turned all the way that way. And if I turn it halfway, 5.8K. This is ohms, right? Turn it there. 3.8K, turn it all the way to the end. <laughs> 0 0.6 ohms <laughs> there, there so there you go so that's how that works it works very well to be honest with you let's i suppose the only other thing to do is we did this for all the other ones as well let's see if we can drive our motor with this circuit so i smelled something dodgy and i realized i just burnt out this resistor here <laughs> so let me just um upgrade it this resistor is working too hard oh, i've just upgraded it and i realized what i did was i had my variable resistor just left at zero ohms for too long and that high current burnt out my resistor <laughs> so yeah so yeah be careful with your variable resistor i had it at zero for way too long okay so i'll connect this to our power rail and then there's a, a few different ways i could put it i could put it across the variable resistor all right I'll give it a spin so it's nowhere near as strong as the uh the series Resistor that just does more current 
it's better it's more efficient but this does work so just to show you here if i short out if i turn this variable resistor to zero i give a short and my motor immediately turns off as i turn it back up give it a spin so now even at 10k ohms the motor is still going 60 milliamps of current it's not the best really yeah it works so I mean, I'm guessing if, if I have to use, uh, I'm going to have to use a voltage regulator in my final project. I'm probably going to go with the series one, which is uh, this one here. So this is going to be probably the voltage regulator that I go with, unless I end up developing a switching, a switch switch power supply. So if I can get to that kind of level, that would be nice. And that's what I'm going to try and push towards in my next few videos. So yeah, if you want to see them, subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed this one. It's alright. I mean, it's not the best. My previous video with the series one was a lot better, but cool. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.